Hi, boys and girls. Miss Riddle again. And I have a book called Bad News for Outlaws, The Remarkable Life of Bass Reeves, Stepped the U.S. Marshal. It's, this is really important because he was from Arkansas and Oklahoma, and he was a lawman here in Muskogee, Oklahoma. And if you didn't realize, boys and girls, that's where I'm from. That's where I teach is in Muskogee at Hilldale. And uh, this is, we do a Bass Reeves celebration once a year. And um, come out when we do that. It's really interesting in his life. Well, I'm going to introduce it to you. And hopefully you'll do some research on your own uh, about his life. Cover page. Showdown, Indian Territory, 1884. Jim Webb's luck was running muddy when Bass Reeves rode into town. Webb had stayed one jump ahead of the lawman for two years. He wasn't about to be caught now. Packing both rifle and revolver, the Desperado leaped out of a window by Baywater store. He made a break for his horse, but Reeves cut him off. Bass hollered from the saddle of his stallion, warning Webb to give up. The outlaw bolted. Bass shook his head. He hated bloodshed, but Webb might need killing. As a deputy U.S. Marshal, it was Bass's job to bring Webb in, alive or dead. Bass had put Webb behind bars before, but the outlaw was back on the run. That would end today. Webb couldn't outrun a horse, and he knew he'd hang for sure this time. In a last-ditch effort to escape, Webb stopped in his tracks, turned, and let loose with his rifle. Webb's first shot grazed Webb uh, Bass's saddle horn. His second shot cut the lawman, cut the button from the lawman's coat. Excuse me. <laughs> Webb's third tore the reins right out of Bass's hands. Bass ducked his head, dove off his horse, and rolled to his feet just as a north a fourth bullet clipped his hat brim. Miss Rose having some issues today. I apologize, class. That was Jim Webb's last shot ever. Marshal Reese fired two rounds from his Winchester rifle, and the outlaw was done for. As he lay dying, Webb told Bass, You are a brave, brave man. I have killed 11 men, and I have expected to make you the 12th. Webb gave Bass his revolver out of respect. Bass buried Webb's body and turned in the outlaw's boots and gun belt as proof he'd gotten his man. Being a peace officer in Indian Territory was rough and dangerous. The area swarmed with horse thieves, train robbers, cattle wrestlers, and gunslingers. Bandits, swindlers, and murderers thrived. Travelers sometimes disappeared, never to be heard from again. A lawman's career could be short and end bloody. So Bass Reeves had a big job, and it sued him right down to the ground. Everything about him was big. Bass stood ahead taller than most men of his time. He had broad shoulders and huge hands. Bass was so strong, he single-handedly pulled a steer out of mud up to its neck, while a bunch of slack-jawed cowpokes stood speechless. Bass sported a large, bushy mustache and wore a wide-brimmed black hat. He rode tall, powerful horses, but the biggest thing about Bass Reeves was his character. He had a dedication to duty few men could match. He didn't have a speck of fear in him, and he was as honest as the day is long. Slave Days, 1840s to 1860s. Bass spent most of his early years as a slave in Texas. Even as a youngster, his star shone bright. Bass was sharp-witted and good-natured. People liked his pluck. He had a special way with animals, especially horses. Bass tended livestock and fetched water for the field hands. While he worked, Bass sang. He sang about pistols and rifles and knives. He sang about bandits and killers and thieves. His mother feared her boy might go bad. She could have been more wrong. Bass took to guns like a bear to honey. And he always handled them with respect. He grew up smart and decent, had nothing but right in his heart. His owner, Colonel George Reeves, took Bass hunting and entered him in shooting contests. He liked showing Bass off. Bass impressed his owner so much that Colonel took him along when he went to fight in the Civil War. But one night, something happened that changed everything for Bass. Folks say the two men argued during a card game, and Bass struck his owner. For a slave, this meant certain death. Bass made tracks for Indian Territory. Freedom and Family, late 1860s to 1874. 
Only Native Americans were supposed to live in Indian territory, but some Indians accepted blacks. Bass lived within the tribes, learned their languages, and perfected their marksmanship. As he ro roamed the frontier, Bass felt a freedom he'd never known. Still, as a runaway slave, Bass had to keep on the dodge. Finally, the Civil War ended, and the slaves were free. It was safe for Bass to settle down. He bought a spread in Arkansas just outside Indian Territory and married a pretty woman named Jeannie. True to the song of his life, Bass had a big family. He and Jeannie and their 11 children worked the land and raised hardy livestock. Bass's life was good, but times were hard for folks in Indian Territory. The vastness of this wild country offered countless places for bad men to hide. The territory became a haven for the West's most notorious outlaws. Settlers in Indian Territory had enough. Even though most were squatters who had put down stakes illegally, they still wanted protection. <clears throat> Deputy U.S. Marshal, 1875 to 1900s. In 1875, the U.S. government sent Judge Isaac C. Parker to bring law to the territory. People called him the Hanging Judge, and the mention of his name made outlaws who had never spent a day in church whisper a prayer. The judge hired 200 deputy marshals to track down outlaws in an area covering 74,000 square miles, larger than what would become the entire state of Oklahoma. Bass Rays was one of them. He became Judge Parker's most trusted man. Bass was perfect for the job. He knew the territory and its people. Downright handy tools for tracking criminals. And his skill with shooting irons was already the talk of the territory. Bass was blazing fast on the draw and as good with his left hand as with his right. He would say he was only fair with a rifle. Bass was such a crack shot, he was barred from turkey shoots and picnics and fairs. He always won. A sharp, one sharpshooter said when Bass stood firm and took careful aim, he could shoot the left hind leg off a contented fly sitting on a mule's ear at 100 yards and never ruffle hair. <clears throat> like most former slaves, Bass couldn't read. But this didn't stop him from doing his job. Before going after wanted men, he had the arrest warrants from Judge Parker read to him. Bass listened carefully and memorized the shapes of the letters for each name he heard. He memorized the charges against each person too. Then he had hit the trail. Even when he got 30 warrants at one time, Bass always brought in the right outlaws. Bass could be out man hunting for weeks. He slept on the ground under the stars and worked in bitter cold and sweltering heat. Like other deputy marshals, Bass traveled with a chuck wagon and cook a guard, at least one posse man, and a tumbleweed wagon to transport captives. And that's what they mean by tumbleweed wagon. It, it was a wagon that had bars on it. It was like a jail cell wagon. And this is a chuck wagon that had the food and supplies in it and the cook would come along and Many lawmen of the time weren't much better than the hard cases they arrested, but Bass was as right as rain from the boot heels up. He couldn't be bribed, and he shot only as a last resort. Even when Judge Parker said, bring him in alive or dead. Some outlaws like Jim Webb forced gunplay. Whenever Bass could, he found another way. Bass took many a bad man by surprise through the use of disguises. One day, he'd pose as a cowboy. Another, he'd be a tramp, a gunslinger, or an outlaw. Even horses played a part in his disguises. Like many U.S. Marshals, Bass rode some of the finest. Most times he forked a handsome sorrel. Bass rode proud in the saddle. There was no mistake in his silhouette. But prize horse flesh could be a dead giveaway that the rider was a lawman. Bass always kept some rough stock and rode lazy while undercover. He planned every capture carefully. When Bass caught wind that two outlaw brothers were holed up at their mother's cabin, he rounded up a posse and made camp some distance away. Bass knocked heels from a pair of worn boots and shot three holes in a floppy old hat. He hid his badge, handcuffs, and pistols under trail-worn clothes, then started walking alone to the hideout. It was a long walk, 28 miles. Bass wanted to be sure that if the brothers spotted him, they wouldn't suspect he was the law. When the outlaw's mother answered the door, Bass said he was tuckered out and hungry. Showing the woman the bullet holes in his hat, he claimed a posse was after him. She took Bass in, fed him some victuals, and even let slip that her boys were on the lam. That means they're wanted by the police. When the two arrived, they agreed to partner up with Bass. And after sharing some laughs, everyone went to sleep. Everyone except Bass. 
At sunup, the brothers awoke in handcuffs. They were dumbstruck, but their maw was fit to be tied. As Bass led her sons away, she followed for three miles, calling them every bad name she knew. <clears throat> On a different warrant, Bass pretended to be a farmer. He rented some scrawny oxen and a run-down wagon. Bass drove the rig to the hideout of the men he was tracking. He ran over a stump on purpose and got a wheel caught. The outlaws came out to help. They wanted to get him away from their hideout. Just as the criminals freed up the wagon, Bass jerked his colts, that means his guns. Seeing it was Deputy U.S. Marshal Bass Reeves, all four outlaws threw up their hands. And he said, we give up. That's what they said. Bass brought in wagon loads of criminals, as many as 17 prisoners at a time. Being a church-going man, Bass reckoned he could do more than put bad men behind bars. In the evenings after supper, he talked to the outlaws about the Bible and about doing right. Getting through to them was like trying to find hair on a frog, but Bass, but Bass kept trying. Now and then, captured outlaws tried to get the better of the marshal, but Bass was tough and unflappable. One day, while he napped, a skunk moseyed into camp and stopped next to Bass. Captains chained to the tumbleweed wagon threw stones at the skunk, hoping it would spray its stink on the lawman. But when Bass awakened, he didn't flinch. He reached out and gently petted the skunk. Word spread that Bass was a square shooter but a hard man. Outlaws learned that when Bass, when Marshal Reeves had your warrant, you were as good as got unless you hightailed it out of the territory. One outlaw named Hullaby Sammy did just that. With Bass on his heels, Sammy mounted a swift black charger that flat out ran the Marshal Sorrel. But Bass was patient. He would cross paths with Sammy on another day, and Bass would get his man. Even the infamous bandit queen, Belle Starr, admired Bass. Belle was about as far from tender as boot leather. She trifled with the likes of Jesse James and didn't cotton to lawmen. But when she heard Bass was had her warrant, she turned herself in for the first and only time in her long, lawless career. And if you're from Oklahoma, you also should research Pat, uh, Bell Star. Bass was respected and he was hated. Some whites didn't like the notion of a black man with a badge. Desperados simply wanted Bass off their trails. Bass had to be on the lookout day and night for bad men who were out to dry gulch him. But danger was a small matter for this lawman. Duty was his guide. Right and wrong were clear and simple. One day on the prairie, Bass came across an angry mob lynching a man. Without a word, Bass cut the man down and put him on the back of his sorrel. That's a horse. This was near as risky as a grasshopper landed on an anthill. But the mob just watched in awe as he rode off. They recognized Marshal Reeves and dared not interfere. Bass's devotion to duty was legendary. His sense of justice was never more tested than by his son, Benjamin. One awful day, Benjamin killed his own wife after she'd been untrue. Bass was so well-liked that no one wanted to arrest his son. For two days, the warrant lay on the desk of the marshal in Muskogee. When Bass returned to the jail with prisoners, he got the sad news. It was painful, but he did what only Bass Reeves would do. He arrested his own son and turned him over to the court. Although he was sentenced to life, Bass's son was a model prisoner and was pardoned after serving just 10 years. Oklahoma Statehood, November 16, 1907. Bass Reeves' life as a Deputy U.S. Marshal ended the day Oklahoma became a state and Indian Territory ceased to exist. State and local lawmen took over the federal marshal's duties. Bass Reeves served as Deputy U.S. Marshal in Indian Territory for 32 years, longer than any other. In fact, he was the only deputy who started with Judge Parker and stayed clear through statehood. He arrested more than 3,000 men and women, blacks, whites, and Indians. Many were desperate outlaws who knew Bass rode for Parker and figured they had nothing to lose by fighting to the death. Bass had many close calls, but was never wounded. Remarkably, he killed only 14 men in the line of duty. Now the finest deputy U.S. Marshal of his time was out of a job. Bass buck getting put out to pasture. He hired on with the police force in Muskogee, Oklahoma. 
Bass was nearly 70 years old and walking with a cane, but he still put the fear of God into lawbreakers. During his first two years on the force, not a single crime occurred in his patrol area. One fall day, Bass Reeves left work feeling ill. Two months later, on January 12, 1910, he died of a kidney ailment called Bright's disease. Hundreds of people, blacks, whites, and Indians, attended his burial. A fellow lawman, Bud Ledbetter, called Bass, one of the bravest men this country has ever known. And when White Homesteader said Bass was the most feared deputy U.S. Marshal that it was ever heard of. Over the years, the name of Bass Reeves faded, like one of those heroes they call unsung. But his story has folks talking again, talking about the big man who helped bring peace to a big country. Deputy U.S. Marshal Bass Reeves, a true champion of the American West. Thank you, everybody. Research. Find these uh, people of the Old West. Go online. Find out more of their story. There's your challenge for today. Bye.